A lot of people think there is a link between economic freedom and income inequality. And if you think about it, an economically free society allows people to grow and prosper and become rich. And we've had Rockefellers and Bill Gates. We've got a lot of examples of people who become very, very rich in market economies. But on the other hand, we have people that become rich in non-market economies too, like dictators. So I think it's more of an empirical question as to whether or not economic free societies have more income inequality than less. I think it's a bad idea to cherry pick your data. When many people look at income inequality and economic freedom, what they do is they pick two countries. People will pick Sweden and the United States because that confirms their ideological bias. Other people like me might pick Germany and Brazil because that confirms their ideological bias. But the, re the real answer to these kinds of questions is to use all the data you have available. When you use all the data you have, have available, you get a balanced view of the reality that we face. Income inequality is not related to economic freedom in any great way. So the argument that economic freedom causes us to have a lot of inequality just doesn't hold up to an empirical scrutiny. There are a lot of things that drive income inequality. Some of it is just natural. Some people are more skilled than other people. They're going to become richer than other people. And that's going to be true in every society. I think inequality is a bad thing if, someone's, if someone becomes rich by stealing from everybody else, a massive thief. Media tend, tends to talk about the rich versus the poor, the idea that the rich get rich at the expense of the poor, when the reality is that may be true, like with dictators, but it's not true for most people in market economies. Most people in market economies grow and prosper and become rich by providing things people want. So it depends on how the inequality is, is generated. Rather than talk about income inequality today, I think we should talk about income mobility too. Looking at how many people who are poor today become rich five or 10 or 20 years later, or how many people are rich today and become poor five or 10 or 20 years later. Getting rich in America should be about creating value for people. Unfortunately, a lot of rich people decide that once they have their money, they should protect it and they go to the government to get special privileges and monopoly privileges and protections for themselves. Uh, I think we need to take away those protections. Just because you're rich doesn't mean you should get any special privileges. If you provide a product that no one wants to buy, if your company fails, your company should fail. You should go bankrupt. When low-income people have trouble and they lose their jobs, they lose their jobs. Uh, I think we need to hold that same standard to rich people that we always hold to poor people. So the real question for the United States isn't whether income inequality is growing or, or becoming better or worse. It's whether income mobility is becoming better or worse. I think it's probably becoming worse. I think there's less of a chance that a poor person becomes John D. Rockefeller uh, than there used to be. There are a lot of areas where low-income people used to be able to become part of that opportunity society. They would start taxi cabs, but you can't tar start a taxi cab in many cities without a hundred thousand or a million dollar license in New York City. You can't start a hair braiding operation in many cities because you don't have a two thousand dollar school uh, license to do so. You can't start a food truck in most cities without uh, all these permits. So. All of those areas where low-income people used to be able to pull themselves up through the economic system, a lot of those are being undercut by stiff regulations from the government. We really need an opportunity society, a society where poor people can become middle income and rich, a society where poor people can start that business. If you want to have more income equality in the United States, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to let rich people fail. Too often when rich people make bad decisions, we bail them out. But the same token, we need to let poor people become rich. We need to unleash capitalism for poor people. We need to take away the taxes and regulations that keep people from growing and prospering their own businesses.